Was that the bite of 87? Bite of 87? Bite of 87? What's up guys? So I made this remix of The Bite of 87. I'm surprised nobody had remixed it before because this meme is not like super fresh when I'm making this. It's still, you know, it's still around I guess, but it's not super fresh. And I was like, why are there no remixes of this? Because I don't, it just sounds very rhythmic to me, but I made one um, and you just heard it. And uh, well, <laughs> how did I do it? Um, it kind of Andrew Huang style, you know, I took the sample and I made a whole beat and song out of just the sample. Obviously it's not like a full length song or anything. Uh, but every everything that you hear in the song came from it, including the bass, including the kick drum, the hi-hat, and the snare clap sound. Those were all from it. The snare clap is probably the easiest one because you just take that from the chomp sound effect at the beginning. The bass and the kick were definitely the most involved sounds. They were the farthest away from the original audio, but they were processed completely based on audio uh, from that Markiplier clip and there was no extra generator or extra sample used at any point in the process. So let me show you how I did all this. The clap, as I said, was the easiest thing by far. All we do is chop that out, make it unique as a sample, and then we just pitch it up, just like that. There's our clap. The hi-hat was pretty similar. We just get the S from seven. 87, seven. So we cut that out, boom, take that, make that unique as sample. And uh, there we go. There's a hi-hat. The bass was pretty involved. We started with this tiny clip of him saying the word bite. bite. And then we pitch it down so it sounds like this. Then I EQ'd it as shown here. Normalizing that we get this clip. And obviously there's that big swell, that big moment of bass right in the middle. And we take that and use it for the rest. We're going to take this middle clip and cut it down even shorter to this. And then we are going to take this and put it into Edison. Now that we've got this bass in Edison, we can select a couple oscillations and make a tuned loop just like that. And now select all and we can send it to the playlist. We've now got it as an audio file, but we actually need it as a sampler. So we're going to add a sampler here and then we're going to drag that into the sampler. And now we have a bass. So right now we have this. It's a good sine wave, but there's a couple more things we need to do. First of all, we need to create an envelope just like this. So now has a little bit of a decay to it. Then we're going to put some effects on and now it sounds like a proper 808. All made from Markiplier saying the word bite. For the kick drum, the first few steps are actually the same as the bass. So we're just going to go back to bass stage three for our kick. Similar to the bass, we're going to actually want to use a sampler for this. And that's because for the kick, it's just important, maybe even more important than for the bass, we're going to want to use an envelope. And that requires using a sampler instead of an audio file on the channel rack in FL Studio. So here, what we're going to do is manipulate the sample start time, the length and the out knob. And we're just going to get those nice and good. That's probably about right. That'll be a good kick. Now for kicks, you're gonna want to have the pitch go down very quickly over that duration. Fortunately, there's a pitch envelope in FL Studio's audio sampler, so we can just manipulate that. We might want it to start a little higher because we're making that pitch go down. See how the amount knob is going to the left? That means it's going down. Even though the visual of the envelope goes up, it is going down because the amount is negative here. That's sounding a lot better, and so now we can route it through quite a few effects, uh, and it should sound like this. That's not as good as the actual kick I ended up with because the sample that I just created is slightly different from the sample I originally made and I tailored this effect stack for the original sample I created, but the process works. So finally we have that demon sound bit in the middle of it, which is just this audio. My whole world is turned up pitched down and copied a few times. I pitched it down 6, 12, and 18 semitones, added a volume ramp to the pitch down versions for a little bit of shape, and you get this. My whole world is turned upside down. That doesn't make any sense. Now I have a question. What is behind lock four? To find the answer to that question, you're probably gonna have to listen to my new single, What's Behind Lock 4. <laughs> anyway, it's available on all streaming platforms and all that, and of course on this YouTube channel. It's a very psychological hip-hop track that um, 
meant a lot to me and I worked pretty hard on it and I, I'm really happy with the way it turned out so it would mean a lot if you checked that out of course it's nothing compared to this masterpiece but you know probably still worth your time anyway thanks for watching see you next time bye bite of 87 bite of 87 bite of 87 bite of 87 what what what